I'm going to show you pretty quickly here how to customize the colors that are used in the color coding for SharePoint calendars. So if you've watched any of my previous videos or read my blog posts, uh, I've showed you how to set up calendar overlays to color code different calendar events based on the category. And a question that I get all the time is, hey, the colors that SharePoint gives us from the theme are pretty bland. Is there a way that we can customize those colors? The answer is yes, and I'm going to show you here as quickly as I can how you do that. All right, so let's start by looking here at a calendar in SharePoint, right? This is SharePoint Online, but this works for SharePoint 2010. This works for SharePoint 2013, 2016, basically any version that's not 2007 or earlier. So I've got my calendar overlays set up. I've got my them tied to the categories, right? So I've got a category of example one or a category two, category three, right? And these are just using the out of the box um, colors that come with the SharePoint theme that's on this site, right? And this is just a basic team site, literally just out of the box, haven't done anything to the site. So I'm gonna show you how to customize the colors that display here as well as the colors that display here. So actually it's pretty straightforward. Uh, inside of SharePoint, each of these colors has two CSS classes. If you don't know what CSS is, that's cascading style sheets. It is part of web design. CSS is what tells things what color to be or what font to be or how much space to have underneath or to the side of something or what kind of border to put around something, right? It's the styling, the, the look and feel of the elements on your page. So there are two CSS classes that get tied to this. And that's about as far as I'm gonna go into the code. Really, you don't need to know too much. I'll walk you through what you need to know. So I want to identify what I want to change the color for, right? So one thing that I can do, and again, you don't have to do this. You can just copy my CSS file or the, the code that I have and you can upload that file into your site and be done with it. And all you have to worry about is swapping out a color name, but I'm gonna show you how it works. So right now I've got this dark blue color, right? And I wanna see what's controlling that. So there are two ways I can do that. I can right click on this, right? And say inspect, or I can hit the magical F12 key, which will bring up my developer tools in the browser. Right, and what that does is it brings up the kind of the code view, side-by-side -side code view of what I'm looking at on the page. And if I click on this guy, I can actually select an element on the page, right? And it'll show me what code is tied to that element. So I wanna select this guy, right? That's my dark blue calendar item. And it's gonna show me right here what I've selected. But what I'm actually looking for is this parent level item up here. And if I click on this, you're going to see up here, right, that it says ms-acal-color1. This is actually color1 CSS for the first calendar overlay in your theme, right? So if I come down here and look, right, so it's going to show me the code on the page and it's going to show me kind of the breakdown of what's getting applied. But here it is, that ms-acal-color1. And here it is, background color is this value, right? That dark blue. Let's say I wanted it to be red, right? I could come down here and say red. I could come down here and say, make that green. I could come down here and say, make that yellow, right? Or yellow green or green yellow or whatever. So you can use named colors. Uh, this is just standard CSS. You can also use hexadecimal values, right? So if I wanted to make this something like black, I could do this, right? So that's black. You can do any sort of hexadecimal value. You can do just straight up, right, named values. And you can see a bunch of them here. If you Google CSS color values, you will find the whole list. There are a ton of them, right? So you can use this to match to your company's branding or whatever colors you might need. Um, so that's that's behind the scenes, right? So that's for your event here. 
but you've also got this other one that's tied to it, right, which is over here in this left nav. And if you look down here, you're going to see something similar, right? So this is what I did. I clicked on this guy again to highlight the element, and I went and found this. And then down here it says ms-acal-a panel, and then again, color 1. So I can do the exact same thing here, right, with that background color. I can say now make that red, make that yellow, etc. right? I can change that. So what we're actually looking for, though, right, is not this temporary changing of the color that I get from my developer tools. I want to make that more permanent, okay? So I've identified what I need to change, right? I need to change the background color value for this class, this ms-acal-a panel color 1, and then the actual acal color 1, right? So the value for this and the corresponding value for this. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to just pull up Notepad++. This is a free program. I'd recommend if you're going to do anything like this, uh, you download the software and use it. Um, it's nice because it will format your, your code, what little code you need here, in a way that makes it pretty obvious um, what you need to change. It's just a nice visual way to display your code. Um, this is pretty easy to use. But anyway, here's how it looks, right? Here's how your file is going to look. Because to make those color changes permanent, you need to use something in SharePoint called the alternate CSS URL setting. So I'm going to show you how that works, but what it needs is it needs a reference to a file, a CSS file. And this is what that file looks like. So you can have up to nine color overlays on your calendar. Right, so that just goes color one, right? Here's the color, and then the left navigation panel, color two, color three, all the way up to color nine. You can see that I've put some placeholder values in here, right? So color one will be orange, color two will be red, color three will be green, color four will be yellow. Uh, if you want to know where those come from, I'll show you quick, right? So if I come here to the calendar, and I click on the calendar tab in the ribbon, and I go to calendar overlays. And say I click into one of my overlays that I've already set up. All right, you're going to see this drop down, right? If you've set this up correctly, you're going to see this drop down for color. There are nine options here, and it just goes in order. This is color one, this is color two, this is color three, this is color four, all the way through color nine. Right, so what we're doing with this file is we're just saying, hey, overwrite the color that SharePoint has selected for that color value and give it mine, my own, right? So right now on the calendar that I showed you, I've got color one, color two, and color three. So when I'm done with this, my first box, right, orange, red, gold, my first box here is going to be orange, this will be red, this will be gold. I'm just going to do a little refresh here to get rid of the developer tool customizations I just made. So again, right, I'm going to see orange, red, gold, orange, red, gold. And here's how you go about doing that. Uh, first thing you need to know is that to be able to use the alternate CSS URL setting for a site, you need to have enabled publishing features for the site collection, and you need to have enabled the publishing features for the site. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Let me move this little recording thing out of the way. So I need to look at the features for the site collection. So I come up here to the gear, go to site settings, here's site collection features. If I scroll down toward the bottom here, you're going to see this feature, SharePoint server publishing infrastructure. If this isn't activated, you're going to see an activate button. Hit that, make sure that that's active. Once that's done, you can come back into site settings and go to one level lower, which is the site features, right? So you just set the site collection feature, and now you want to make sure that the site level feature is activated. And here it is, SharePoint Server Publishing, make sure that that's active, right? And what that will do is when you go to site settings, it'll give you this link here under look and feel, master page. So if I tap that link, 
it's going to load this site settings piece for a master page. And the one that we care about is down here, alternate CSS URL. So by default, this is set to just use the styles associated with your master page, right? So whatever SharePoint or Microsoft has given you here for these defaults, that's what it's going to use. But you're saying that you want to use a custom CSS file, right? That's what this guy is. That's custom CSS. And we want to use that to overwrite SharePoint styles and colors for those overlays. So to be able to use this, I've got to give it a URL. So in order to do that, I would go to a document library anywhere in my SharePoint tenant or on my SharePoint farm. I would upload that file. Uh, you can click in classic mode, right? You can click on this little ellipsis and you can copy this, right? So that's the URL to your file because that is what you need to enter here. So I'm going to paste that in there, right? So there's my custom CSS.CSS file and I'm going to click OK. Right, give that a second. That is now loaded in. So what that means is when I go back to my calendar, right, it's going to be instead of looking at SharePoint's default stuff, it's going to be look at my, it's going to be looking at my overwrite file. So it's going to say, hey, when we find this class here for color one, we're going to make that orange. Color two, we're going to make that red. Color three, we're going to make that gold so on and so forth, all the way up through color nine. So I've already put that in my settings, right? In my master page, alternate CSS URL. I've uploaded the file to SharePoint, copied that URL to that file and put it in that field. So now when I go here and I refresh, I should see some orange and some red and some gold, right? So again, I've done it in both places. I've done it on the event here and also on the event key over here. So orange, red, gold, and that's all you got to worry about. And again, this is site by site. So if you had different sites that had slightly different branding, you could do the same kind of thing for each site and have different color coding uh, and custom colors on each calendar. Uh, you just, you got to use it that way. So also, just if you have multiple calendars on the same site, this is going to affect all of them, right? Because they all use that same color one, color two, color three. They all use those same classes. So site by site, you can specify different colors. Uh, calendar by calendar, if they're on the same site, you cannot. So just a little limitation to know about there. Um, but again, this still gives you a little more flexibility than you would have otherwise. And it's using out-of-the-box SharePoint functionality, so you don't have to worry about supportability or you know, going outside of what Microsoft wants you to do. They built this in so that you can control some of that styling. Um, so again, that's how you do it. You set up your calendar, you have your overlays, you've got color values 1 through 9 for your overlays. You create this file. And you can create it just as a text file and then have the .css extension, right? So like right click on it and change the extension. Or you can create that file here inside of Notepad++, right? Where I can say, you know, if I select all of this stuff, let's do control all, right? I can say, what language do I want this to be coded in? I can come down here to C and say CSS. Right? And then by default, when I save this in here, that'll save this as a CSS file. Upload that into SharePoint, copy that URL, put that URL in the alternate CSS URL field, and save it. And that's all you got to do. And if you want to change the colors, obviously you come in here and you just change that color the way that I've got here, where I've just named values. Or you can do hexadecimal colors, so you can get pretty specific with the colors that you want to display. And that's really all there is to it. So again, from not having any sort of custom colors to any custom color that you want for your calendar overlays, that's how you do it. Thanks.